Hello, this is Jamie Scherer from the Fusion Street team, and here's a quick lesson on creating a new component in Fusion 360. In this design, we need to create a connecting rod to drive the blade assembly of this reciprocating saw. The connecting rod will be driven from the gear and pin on the right and drive the blade assembly on the left. Let's start designing the connecting rod in Fusion 360. First, let's simplify the model, making it easier to access the components that we need to reference and temporarily removing the geometry that we don't. To control visibility, I'm going to hold shift and select the components in the browser that I need to reference. And then I'll right click to isolate them. You'll see that leaves me with just the components that I need to build between. Next, I'm going to create a new component for the connecting rod. Fusion 360 is flexible and allows me to create geometry easily and only promote it to a component if needed. But in this case, I'm going to create a component from the beginning, allowing me to capture a timeline for this component outside of the context of the entire assembly. Once I create a new component, I'm going to create a construction plane between the faces of the blade assembly that the connector will drive. I'll use the mid-plane tool to create a plane between two faces. Now let's create a sketch to build 2D geometry on. I'll select my construction plane to place my sketch, and now I have a new sketch plane that I can start to create geometry with. The first thing that I want to do in my sketch is grab a few critical pieces of geometry from the other components in the assembly that I'll use to build my connecting rod. I'll use the project tool, which you can find in the sketch menu or keyboard shortcut P and project the pin in the gear assembly and the hole in the blade assembly. This will ensure that not only am I matching the other geometry in the model, but it will create a parametric relationship between the components and the sketch so that if you choose to change the pin size, for example, that, will, that change will update the connecting rod. Often, there are many techniques and approaches to designing in 3D. I'm going to take you through a few different examples to ensure that you get a chance to use many of the tools in Fusion 360. Let's start by sketching a circle in space. You can directly input the size of the geometry while in the circle tool, or you can use the dimension tool to fix the size later. Next, let's use the sketch constraints in the sketch palette to build a relationship between the circle and the projected geometry. I'll create a concentric constraint between the two circles to ensure that my new circle will share the same center point as the projected geometry that I added earlier. Now, to create the circle on the other side, I will sketch the circle by selecting the center point of the pin and draw that circle in space. Rather than adding another 20 millimeter dimension, I will use the equal constraint to ensure that the two circles are the same size and will update together. There are many ways to create the center section of the connecting rod. If you're new to designing, in a CAD tool, I encourage you to try several different techniques, including using rectangles, lines, and other ways that you can find to create the geometry that you're looking for. I'm going to create a construction line between the center points of the two circles, and then offset that line in both directions to create the edges of the component. The center line is not geometry that I need to create the 3D component and was only used as a construction tool. So I'll right click on it and mark it as construction geometry, which will change the appearance to a dashed line. Construction geometry is ignored by Fusion 360 to create closed profiles to turn into 3D geometry. Next, I'll trim the extended lines in my sketch to clean up the edges. Notice that the edges of my sketch geometry are black with the exception of the two edges that are, of the connecting rod that are blue. 
In Fusion 360, sketch geometry that is fully defined by dimensions or constraints will appear as black geometry. Whereas geometry that's underdefined will be blue. And also geometry that has been projected and is still linked to other components will be purple. After trimming the offset edges, the location and the length are no longer completely defined. A best practice would be to fully define your geometry before creating 3D components. I'll add dimensions to the lengths to fully define them. Now it's time to build a 3D connecting rod. From within Fusion's unified modeling environment, I can choose to stop sketch at the end of the toolbar, or just directly select the modeling tool that I want to use to create the geometry. In this case, I'll use press pull to create my component. Press pull in Fusion 360 is a predictive modeling tool. It will extrude closed profiles, fillet edges, and offset faces all in one tool. Knowing the design intent of this connecting rod, I will choose to extrude the circles and the midsection separately as they will all have different dimensions. Let's select the first closed circle profile and extrude it symmetric 6.5 millimeters. Notice, when you use a 2D sketch to create 3D geometry, it's consumed by that action and the sketch is no longer visible. To turn the sketch back on, find it in the browser and use the light bulb to control the visibility. Now let's create the other side of our component. In this case, we have some tolerances that we need to hold and some interferences that we want to avoid. So we will set our extrusion to two sides, which allows us to extrude different distances from the sketch plane. I want to extrude and avoid both the center pin on the gear and the small clamp at the top of the other pin. Once we select the center profile for the connecting rod and extrude it, we'll be able to add some finishing touches like fillets and chamfers. With the basis of our component complete, let's continue to use the press pull tool to fill at the edges of our connecting rod. You can always access the last command that you used by right clicking and you'll find repeat last command at the top of the marking menu. When selecting an edge, press pull will automatically provide options to fill it. One thing that's often a challenge when modeling in 3D space is selecting objects and edges that are obstructed by other objects. For example, if I wanted to select the four corners of our center section, but was having a hard time getting the right selections, Fusion has a prompt that can help you. If you left click and hold on top of the area where your selection resides, it will let you see the select other dialog. This dialog will allow you to run through a list and pre-highlight your selections to ensure that you make the right one. Adding edges to selections in Fusion 360 is something that new users often ask about. Once you continue through the options in a dialog box and want to add more edges to a fillet, you simply need to hold Control on a PC or Command on a Mac and it will remove the previewed fillets and allow you to add more edges. The same works for profiles with extrusions and elsewhere throughout Fusion 360. The last detail we need to add is a slot on the top of our connecting rod. To do so, I'm going to start by creating a sketch on the top face. Creating a continuous profile using the line tool is easy as clicking to create the edges, and then simply clicking and holding on an endpoint, which will automatically switch into an arc. You can see I'm building the sketch constraints automatically by awaking the extension lines and building in those relationships. 
Once I have my slot created, I will apply a coincident constraint to center my slot, and I'll add a few dimensions to locate Once I've located the slot and dimensioned the overall size that I'm looking for, I'll use the press pull tool to remove the geometry from the top of the connecting rod. Last, I want to duplicate this slot on the underside of my part. Rather than spending time recreating sketches on the bottom face, I will use the mirror tool to duplicate the geometry. The mirror tool allows us to mirror faces, features, bodies, and components in our model. I'm simply going to select the feature out of the timeline and mirror it about the work plane that we use to create our component. As you can see, I've mirrored that feature and removed the slot from the bottom of our connecting rod. The final step in creating this component will be to remove the material to connect to the blade assembly. This will serve as a test to the techniques that we've used so far. Simply create a sketch, project the geometry from the blade rod, offset it for clearance, and extrude cut the geometry away from the connecting rod. As a quick tip, use visibility to control which components in Fusion are affected by a feature like an extrude cut.